I don't know if this is the best setup, but anyways, welcome back to my channel, or hi if you're new, I'm Anna Mae, and today I don't really know what I'm doing for this video other than um, making some more masks. So it is May 2021, so I'm like definitely a year behind the like, I'm making a bunch of masks trend, uh, but we still need masks, and I prefer a certain style because we're Feel like a lot of us are very used to wearing masks now um even though i don't go out very much i'm not in school or anything so i don't have to wear them um very often sorry the lighting keeps changing if i'm in like a loft area i thought this would be like a fun easy relaxing video and if you haven't tried making your own masks you know this is maybe a fun way to see how easy it is um these are like not even just the pleated ones these are as you can see the shaped ones i'll link the pattern i'm using down below because i really like it i think it's really easy to follow and everything um i'll kind of show you the steps of going through it i'll show you the fabric and everything I'll try not to make this video too long but i still think it's kind of a relaxing vibes you know so i have already made a bunch of masks and that was kind of my pink batch I do have another pink one I want to do in this fabric because I also just made a top and shorts in this fabric. The shorts are trash, but the top is so cute. So I want to have a matching mask and I'm going to do that out of a pattern piece that I cut incorrectly. And then I also will then change the bobbin um, and I'm going to be using this gray thread because um, it's gonna kind of go with everything. And then that'll be my like blue gray batch. So I'll show you all the fabrics I have but it was from a William Morris set of fat quarters. So I have a bunch of really cute patterns. You'll probably see them closer up later. Sorry, the lighting again keeps changing. Um, and I'm gonna line a lot of those in white, but I don't have enough white cotton left. So I also pulled out some black that I've used for needlepoint ornament stuff before. So I really just want to get these done and I'm kind of trying to do this so then I can get back into needlepoint stuff. I want to paint a bunch of canvases and stuff like that. And also I'm gonna be selling stuff on Depop. So I'll have my Depop link down below. But um, if you haven't tried making masks, you'll probably see how easy it is and maybe try it yourself. I just laid out all of the pieces that I've already cut. You can see and I have them all laid out in their like little pairs. I don't love cutting out pattern pieces. I don't think most people do, um, but it's gotta be done. All of the lining pieces are cut out big stack of those we've got fat stacks going on i only needed a couple actually of the black ones i'm going to because i have the pink bobbin in right now my hand keeps falling back um the pink bobbin in right now so i'm going to sew the waistband of this closed and then sew the lining and the main fabric and just just do the whole thing of the pink mask and I might do that in stages so I can kind of show you how it, how it goes, uh, if I can still remember. I made a lot of these um, about two weeks ago. I made like 12 um, and I'm gonna make like another 12. So I'll do a time-lapse, but for this one, I think I'll show you more step-by-step -step, um, how I do it. And it's really simple. As I said, the instructions that I'm using will be linked down below. Okay, that works. So the shorts are stitched up. So to give you an example, these are, this is the exact style that I'm making. Um, it's the women and teenager size is what I'm making because generally I have a small enough face and I'm a woman, so fits. This is a pretty neat mask because as you can see, hopefully it'll focus, not on me. There you go. This is kind of a wonky one, not the best one to show, but it is um, top stitched. So it's top stitched inside and outside. So um, then you can see the seams here and here. So what we're gonna do first is sew along, there are two pieces here. So I'm gonna put those together, match them up exactly. If you want, you can pin them. Um, 
probably best advice would be to pin them but I'm not going to because I've sewn a lot of these at this point so I'm going to sew along this edge I think it's maybe a one centimeter um, seam allowance and I'm also going to do a white lining this one definitely needs a white lining you're going to want to sew them with the right sides in it doesn't matter for this for either of these fabrics so that's why I'm saying it that but you're going to sew them with the right sides in so wrong side right side so you're going to sew them with these sides facing each other and so along there um but it doesn't matter for me for either of these fabrics so i'm going to do the same along here and then i'll show you how to top stitch so these two this is so close <laughs> these two are stitched here um, I get my sharp scissors. So I will also say I don't backstitch. So that's when you, if you're not familiar, it's, there's usually a button that's like a, a little U-turn. Um, that'll stitch backwards and then you go forwards again to like lock it in place. I don't do that for this row of stitching because it's going to be sewn over so many times. It's just going to create excess bulk that you do not want. So what we're going to do. And you're going to want to choose to like one side to push them to. I think it's typically the right. Um, so what you're going to do is take, it's easier to show it here. We're going to do it this way. So take your seam. There it is. This is the closed bit, the nice neat bit. And you're going to push it to one side. And you're going to then sew along this and sew this down at one side. And you're going to do it the same side on both sides. So choose both like pieces of fabric. So like choose going to the right or going to the left. I think typically you do it to the right, I'm not certain, but you're gonna stitch that down and that's gonna be like, it'll make the seams lay flat and make it like a overall neater look. And that's the top stitching. Honestly, I think you could skip it if you were just trying to just churn out a load of masks at once, but um, I think it gives it a neater finish. If you can get the stitching straight, which I, typically don't but uh anyways insert a clip of me top stitching these yeah okay we're back my top stitching turned out terribly because i was trying to film at the same time and as you can probably tell from that wobbly close-up footage um yeah yeah, things just didn't go well. So I'm just trimming off the little threads here. And this is where we get into the big, more structural work of the mask. Um, it's still it's still a very easy project. Um, so we're going to put the two right sides together and pretty much sew up all the edges. Um, I think some people would add a filter. I don't... Um, I guess that would be like a, a good decision to do. But right now mm -mm, i'm not gonna be doing that so i just put the two right sides together and i folded them out so it's in this shape this one on the outside because when it's flipped around this is also like when it's the right side out this is also going to be the outside and it's going to hold this shape so getting the seams together this is the only place where i would say you'd need to pin so i'm going to pin this together to make sure that the seams stay together both on top and on bottom this big seam here um and then i'm going to sew along this edge and along this edge and i'm not going to try and film that because as you've probably seen from this footage it's not turning out super well we're going to flip it inside out and close in the casing for the elastic so as you can see it's very easy but i'll do like a I'll I'll do the sewing machine part, but I'm not gonna do not gonna try and do a close up because that's not working. Out. When those sides are all stitched up again, trimming off the threads because I forget to before I switch this on every time. Um. This I realized I think I cut out one of the pieces slightly oddly sized um, and I also wasn't back stitching then because 
I don't really feel like this is a part that needs it, but I just realized when part of this is not closed up, I will be back. Okay, yeah, so this one's a bit of a mess um, because part of the stitching on the top seam was not actually, it didn't actually close it together. It was just randomly there because, as I said, the size of this one's a bit weird. So next step is to bag it out as often what they call it and just flip it inside out like, you know, you're pairing together a pair of socks. If you don't sew much, um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty easy one to do. It's not like a scrunchie. Sometimes they can be really annoying. And then you're gonna have a mask, cute. So just try and pinch out the seams. Uh, you could be pressing this, like kind of ironing it um, as you go on all the seams if you're trying to get like really professional level ones, but I'm just looking for something to block out Miss Rona. So <laughs> that's all we need this for. Um, because I feel like we're gonna be wearing masks for quite a while, especially on like planes and stuff like that. And it doesn't bother me that much, to be honest. So, gotta get some cute ones. So, then you just kind of push it out and there you go, a super cute mask. And this one is gonna match a little short sleeve top I have for myself. So, the last step is to close in the casing for the elastic. So, I use quite a skinny elastic. Um, the shape, like my favorite masks were ones that I bought on Etsy. Um, do I have it around here? No. They were pretty much this exact shape. Um, quite small and then they had quite skinny, like real thin elastic. Um, I would say, I, I actually don't even know, maybe less than a, it's less than a quarter inch width of elastic. Um, or like hat elastic. They're the, that's the width that I like. So the casing for me doesn't need to be big. But I'm going to make one fold here and just kind of press it with my fingers because I'm only using cotton it'll crease pretty easily and then gonna roll it again and that roll will be like the size that you want your casing to be and then just stitch along this edge here I will be back stitching on both ends of this to make sure it's really secure but I'm gonna do that on both sides and then I will have a mask So we are all stitched up. This will need to be like, I would press the seams and stuff like that before doing anything else, but there we go. So this is the women and teenagers size um, and it fits me really well. I don't know if that was too muffled. This is the women and teenagers size. It fits me really well. I really like this pattern and this shape. I don't use a nose wire. I don't really need one. Um, I'm also not in a medical setting. This is only for like being out and about going to the post office, going to the supermarket, like going to shops in my town. So it's really no big deal kind of a mask, um, but I think they're really cute. So I'm gonna make a bunch more of these, but I'm pretty sure I have like well enough footage for one video and I don't want to bore you, but I will maybe post this as a reel on Instagram. So follow me on Instagram at Anime by Design if you want to see a reel of all of those William Morris masks. But I'm gonna wrap this video up here I know it wasn't too exciting, but hopefully, you know, showed you how easy it is to make your own mask. Um, as I said, I think I said earlier, there's just not a lot to talk about right now. Um, I'm hoping, you know, that things will be changing in the next couple of months, but you never really know. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. Usually I post more like style, lifestyle content, but this is just what's happening right now. I will have links to the fabric that I used in this down below if I can because I think there's some really cute ones um, especially that gingham and as I said the mask pattern will be in the links down below as well and I will see you in my next video.